Good day, dear students. This is a video on micturition, a basic process in the body. The kidney filters uh, the blood and it filter processes it 36 times a day and forms urine. This urine is emptied by the bladder by a process known as micturition. So, what is micturition? Micturition. is a process it is a mechanism it is a process it is a mechanism by which the bladder empties when it becomes filled by which the urinary bladder empties when it becomes filled so the process by which the urinary bladder empties when it becomes filled is known as micturition now we'll study the functional anatomy of micturition uh, of the urinary bladder then we'll study uh, the of micturition reflex and finally we will study the abnormalities associated with micturition. When we think about the functional anatomy we have to think about three or four structures that is the detrusor muscle, the internal sphincter and the external sphincter, external bladder sphincter. The detrusor muscle is a smooth muscle of the bladder and the smooth muscle cells are connected by gap junctions so this gap junction cells help uh, the electrical impulses to be conducted throughout the detrusor muscle when it is stimulated so it contracts as a single unit as a syncytium so the detrusor muscle contracts as a single unit as a syncytium now when urine collects in the bladder the degree of stretch is detected by this internal sphincter stretch is detected by the internal sphincter and when one voluntarily wants to empty the bladder the external sphincter is relaxed in addition there is a area known as the trigone of the bladder which is of the posterior wall of the bladder which is made up of thick rugae it is made up of thick curves which are known as rugae so the detrusor muscle, which is the main smooth muscle of the bladder, which helps in bladder contraction. It is made up of gap junctions, which help in communication between the adjacent cells. So the detrusor muscle functions as a single unit. Then the internal bladder sphincter detects the degree of stretch in the bladder. The external bladder sphincter, which is under the control of the pudendal now, it is under voluntary control and it is relaxed when one wants to empty the bladder. And uh, then there is a trigone on the posterior wall of the bladder. With regard to the bladder, we need to study these nerves. There are three nerves. One is this pelvic nerve. The pelvic nerve is the parasympathetic nerve. Both efferents and efferents are carried by the parasympathetic nerve. We know that uh, the parasympathetic is the rest and digest response. So the parasympathetic helps in emptying uh, empty of the bladder. When we have one has eaten, one is resting. After that, one feels the need to micturate. That function is performed by the parasympathetic nervous system. Then there is the sympathetic nerve. The sympathetic nerve helps in filling of the bladder. The sympathetic nerve, uh, nervous system is concerned with the flight and fight and flight response. And Finally, there is a parental nerve which exerts control. Voluntary control means through our own will, we can control the external sphincter. We can choose the time and place where one wants to pass urine and that is due to the parental nerve. So the time and place where one wants to pass urine, that is chosen by the parental nerve by relaxing the external uh, sphincter. The pelvic nerve controls the contraction of the bladder and the sympathetic nerve controls the filling of the bladder. Having on the to the micturition reflex. Now, when 100 to 150 ml of urine collects in the bladder, the micturition reflex begins in a weak manner. But when this amount, 350 to 400 ml of urine collects, strong micturition contractions begin. There is stimulation of stretch receptors in the bladder wall and stimulation of the pelvic nerves and stimulation of the pelvic nerves 
So the pelvic nerves are simulated, they carry impulses to the spinal cord and then to the efferent pelvic nerves, there is contraction of the bladder. As a result, there is contraction of the wall of the bladder. There is contraction of what? This is the contraction of the detrusor muscle in the bladder. As a result, there is an urge to urinate. Now, whether one wants to pass urine or not depends voluntarily on the person. So, uh, there is, if there is voluntary relaxation of the external sphincter put into the nerve, then there is micturition or urination. So, this is the micturition reflex. The final urge to micturate, urinate uh, depends on voluntary control. And if one finds a suitable time and place, then one relaxes the external sphincter. That is why uh, that is how micturition takes place. And there is contraction of the wall of the bladder. These are some of the abnormalities associated with the bladder. The first is a tonic bladder. The first is a tonic bladder. You can see the lesion here is the pelvic pelvic nerve. And as a result, no maturation reflex is initiated. So the bladder fills and over empties a few drops at a time. The point is known as a tonic. It has no tone. It is known as a tonic of the bladder. It commonly occurred with syphilis, which are, uh, who is a disease of the new world. It began in the 16th century. It was rampant, a sexually transmitted disease before penicillin was discovered. And therefore, this is also known as stubatic bladder. So the bladder fills to capacity and empties a few drops at a time. It is known as overflow incontinence. In a tonic bladder, there is overflow incontinence. And what is the lesion? There is a lesion in the uh, pelvic nerves which supply the bladder. Next is a lesion in the uh, in the brain. So uh, uh, there is loss of inhibitory control. So when there is loss of inhibitory control, even a small volume of urine collects and elicits a micturition reflex. So this is known as a spastic neurogenic bladder. A small volume of urine collects and exerts a micturition reflex. And finally, uh, if there is a lesion in the spinal cord, then first there will be a stage of spinal shock. Then re reflex activity of the bladder empties automatically, unannounced periodic emptying of the bladder occurs. The take home message. So, maturation is a process. It is a process by which the urine bladder empties when it becomes filled. Then, the, what does the internal sphincter do? The internal sphincter detects the degree of stretch in the bladder and the external sphincter exerts voluntary control. So, the degree of stretch in the bladder is detected by the internal sphincter. Degree of stretch in the bladder wall is detected by the internal sphincter, the external sphincter exerts voluntary control. The parasympathetic helps in contraction, the sympathetic helps in filling of the bladder. As it is, when one is resting after a meal, at that time, bladder contraction occurs and that is exerted by the parasympathetic control. The pudendal nerves exert voluntary control of the bladder. In 300, maturation reflex is initiated and damage to the pelvic nerves results in an autonic bladder. So the bladder fills to capacity and overflows a few drops at a time. Overflow incontinence and opposite occurs when there is damage to the higher centers. No inhibitory control is exerted. As a result, only a small volume of urine collects in the bladder and the bladder micturition uh, reflex is initiated. So this is known as spastic neurogenic uh, bladder. So thank you. And have a, and enjoy the day. Have a good day.